Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Mindset Alchemy podcast. I'm Janine, your host, and I am delighted to be here. Mindset Alchemy is where we help you understand how to know intuitively, to choose consciously, to create intentionally, and to be effortlessly. And because I am all about things intuitive, I have a very, very special guest on the show today. And it is with absolute pleasure that I introduce Dr. Ida Green, all the way from America. Ida, thank you so much for being here with us today. Could you please introduce yourself to our audience and tell them where you are, who you are, and what you do? I will do that. Good. Hello, everyone. I am Dr. Ida Green, and I live in San Diego, California. <clears throat> I am a registered nurse. I am an ordained minister. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. I am an author of 22 books. Wow. And I also um, am a, a coach as well. And I do programs on helping people to awaken, develop, and grow their intuition. And so I am I have a program right now, that I, a five-week program, beginning program that I am doing right now. And it ends on the 1st of September. Then after that, people have a choice to go into my 90-day, a six-month coaching program and to help them to and develop and awaken their intuition even more. So I, just, I have five, got 10 tips that can help you, 10 signs that can help you to decide if you're intuitive and you don't know it. So I'll talk about one in particular, but I'm gonna give you all 10 of them together. The first, awesome. you, first one, you pick up on everyone's emotions. Number two, you have visit dreams. Number three, you're very discerning. Number four, your thoughts drop into your mind from nowhere. Six, you get messages from all around. Seven, psychics hunt you down because your third eye is open and they see the light inside of you and they're curious about that and want to know more about you. Seven, you may be suffering from a chronic illness that doctors cannot cure. And uh, that's because you uh your body is vibrating at a higher level and you need to have that divine energy come through. The other one is that you're prone to addiction, that this is kind of curious because people who are, don't know their psychic, they may be drinking too much alcohol, too much caffeine, overeating, smoking, using drugs or indulging in other dick behaviors that disconnect them from their intuition. And I have a lady in my program right now who has that concern. And number nine, you feel a special connection to nature. 10, synchronicity stalks you when you're intuitive but unaware of it. It's almost as if intuition tries to get your attention internally first. You're not paying, you're not, but you're not paying attention. Your intuition will grab you by the outside and shake you from the inside until you're listening. So those are all the signs of it. Now, I was, my mom was clairvoyant. Oh, let me tell you, there's four kinds of um, of th that. You're either class, cla uh, clairvoyant, where you see, okay. you're either clairaudient, where you mm -hmm. hear, you're clairsentient, mm -hmm. where you feel, or you're cog cognizant, where you just know. And I have one lady in my program right now who uh, is that way. So myself, I am a uh, I'm cloud knowing, not cat, cognizance. I feel, I also, when I see, I see in my dreams, not outwardly. I also uh, feel, I hear, and I also uh, feel. So those are the five methods that you can do. And in my program, I help people to recognize which one of them, which one they are. And if they are not aware of which one, then we help them. I do a thing called intuition activation. It's a 25 uh -huh. minute program process where I awaken the intuition and I activate the intuition because the intuition is really uh, is, is built in everyone. 
but we have to recognize and acknowledge it. And we're kind of asleep. Everyone doesn't know they have it, but we all have it. So what I do is activate and awaken it and get, it's like a sleeping genie and help That's awaken true. it and activate it so that you can use it. And what I really like to do right now, I'm helping women in their relationship, but the ones who come to me most come to me to, to use in their business. So some people call me the business psychic, <laughs> but I just help awaken their intuition, help them teach them how to use it and coach them how to use it, and then give them guidance on how to use it. Another um, thing that I have, service that I have is I help people get rid of, uh, what we call it, uh, emotional trauma. So I do mm -hmm. a process called emotional trauma release. Then I have them, I have another process where I open up the cancer records so they can see what is in their life pattern. And then I have another one called Dr. Ida, for the sake of our audience, just explain what the Akashic records are, please. Okay, yeah. The Akashic records are places where we've lived, we all have been here before, and we've lived before. And there are things in our lifetime, all the lifetime where we've lived, that information is there. We've lived before, we've lived many lifetimes, we've been many races, and we've been um, many places and cultures. And all those cultures are there, and we can take a look at them. What I do is help you to go back and see which one where you had the most trouble and help you to fine tune that so you won't have to repeat that and you can do that in this lifetime. But mm -hmm. one of my things, like to give an example, one of my lifetime, I had a past life reading done for me, and I was burned at the state because I was a psychic. So mm -hmm. in this lifetime I came in, I really was afraid to talk about my intuition. Mm -hmm. And I didn't talk about it. At first, I started doing angel readings with the children. Then I started teaching classes about the angels. And then I kind of got into stepping out in my out of my comfort zone and start giving psychic reading. And then I started talking and teaching about it. But it took mm -hmm. me some time to really to get comfortable because even though the past life remembers, I was afraid that I was going to, underneath spiritually, I was afraid that I might get traumatized or criticized or hurt because of my psychic, my psychic experiences. So in the mm -hmm. Castle Record, we look at all the things that you've had in your lifetime, the things that block you. So I had, I had past life sessions done for myself. I paid someone to do them for me. And one time, I was Caesar Augustus in a past lifetime. I was Moses in another lifetime. I, uh, what else I was? Oh yeah, I think I also, what was really vivid for me is that in one lifetime, I was a little, a, I was a man and a little boy, but I got drowned because of that. So in this lifetime, and I had a problem with my lungs, in this lifetime, I made sure that I could swim. So I took swimming lessons. So well I made, done that I wouldn't that wouldn't drown in this lifetime so it's good mm -hmm. to know that information so you can can really uh protect yourself and make sure that you don't have that problem in this lifetime especially mm -hmm. I one one time where I died from lung problem so I made sure I'm protecting my lungs and breathing so the past life information is really good for us because it lets us know what we have to do but I also help people with this lifetime because <laughs> some of them are not ready to look at the past life. If they're not mm -hmm. ready, I don't take them there because mm -hmm. we have enough trauma in this lifetime to deal with. But I think it's good to know that. Like my sister was, she and I was in another lifetime together. And once I realized that, now I'm very careful how I talk to her, how I treat her. Uh, so there's no conflict between us because I don't have to repeat that again. So mm -hmm. our past life is there to uh, so we can educate can educate us so we can learn how we can use it to move forward. What the blocks, emotional blocks we've had that we want to work through in this lifetime. So we're mm -hmm. here to really um, uh, clean up comics, past comic um, trauma. Are we here to advance forwardly? So in this lifetime, I chose to advance forward and to use my past life experiences so that I can partner with God. So what I do is I partner with God 
to help people awaken, advance, and use their intuition because the intuition is that divine part of us. It's that God part of us that we, we're really divine people. And mm -hmm. we uh, tap into that, the, our own divine self, and we become outwardly partners and really healing the planet. So my intention is to be the arm, the right hand of God so that God can speak through me and use me so I can advance people, waken their intuition, advance humanity, help people to get into the divine self and live a divine life. Mm -hmm. That sounds awesome. Yes, I must say I have found it very valuable taking clients to their Akashic records. One thing I have learned uh, from people who have taken people to their Akashic records and not brought them back fully. So that is something to be aware of, people, if you do go for an Akashic re record reading, to make sure that you ground yourself and come back fully into yourself. Dr. Ida, you mentioned um, that you do trauma counseling and that you help people to move forward from that. What has your experience been with this? How have you experienced this in helping people? Is there a common theme, a common thread? What have you come to understand through doing this very valuable work? What I have found is that we all have had some trauma. I feel like in this lifetime, I married, my first husband was schizophrenic. So mm -hmm. I had to learn um, how to deal with that and move through that. My second husband was bipolar. He's an alcoholic. He was physically abusive. So I was in abusive marriage. So from that healing of that, my self-esteem, my self-worth was restored and damaged. So from that, I started working with uh, women with domestic violence issues because I had experienced that in this lifetime. And so for a long time, I counseled abusive women. I counseled children who were in abusive with families who was in those uh, who had been traumatized by the drugs that the parents were using. And I worked with CPS, Child Protective Services clients, so that um, I could help them to get, and they were in foster homes. So I would help the children get reunited uh, with back with the mother and the father. This was a whole process of I had to create a program where the men went through anger management and the women went through anger management. They went through my domestic 52 week domestic violence program. So mm -hmm. that was a year long program for all of them to help them to heal from that trauma. So mm -hmm. what I realized now, I wasn't teaching that stuff now, but had I known then, I could have helped them to look at their intuition to uh -huh. see. Uh, how that might have come about. But then there's a county program and the county doesn't pay for intuitive stuff. So right now I still counsel insurance kids and when women, but since they don't pay for that, I, they people have to pay that service out of their pocket for me, but I do that service as well. But it's so good to, to know what trauma you dealt with. And when I do my trauma release, I help them go back and look at all the trauma that they have been experienced. Like, some of my trauma in this lifetime was um, being African-American in the United States. And so being African-American in the United States with the racism and systemic racism, that affected my self-esteem in this lifetime, not a past life, in this lifetime. Mm -hmm. So I've been dealing with that from childhood to now. I still find myself, uh, although I'm well-educated, I find myself, I uh, have a PhD and all that, I find myself acting like I really don't know and I'm unsure and mm -hmm. and dealing with discrimination and racism. So that trauma I'm working still with to heal so that I won't take it into another lifetime. But my intention this lifetime is to come back by choice and because I've been working for the past 25 years to evolve and to forgive and to look at any trauma that I may have caused or may have put on other people but to release that trauma. So that's what I'm doing daily. And that's why I'm doing this work now so that I can go through my emotional trauma. But my tool for myself is love. That's my tool. And I'm into love. I'm into uh, praising God and thanking him. And I'm also into gratitude. 
So like the other day I was driving and I was just thanking God for letting me make the green lights. I'm constantly into gratitude. Every day I find a penny and that's God's signal to me that he's going to take care of me. So right now, all my clients find me. I never go look for clients. God just send me my clients. And I got to that point now where I trust and I listen and I obey. And I had a problem with uh, prosperity, owning my prosperity and looking at my prosperity. So this is coming from the South and not having very much growing up and being very poor. Money was a problem for me. So I had to work through my limitation, my limited mindset, my uh, limitation belief and thoughts of lack and limitation. So I've had to work on that. So I have gone through programs that help me to deal with that. And uh, one thing that was really helped me in this lifetime is that I was $75,000 in credit card debt because I was doing all this, going to all these places to work on myself. So God allowed me and helped me to find a way to pay that off. Then I went through a, a program to help you to grow your business. And I wanted to test and trust God to see if he could provide for me. So that was an $18,000 program. So I didn't want to use my credit card. I wanted to use my debit card, my mm. checking, checking account. Every And the program was $900 a month for a year. Every month on the 17th of the month, they debited my my it my my debit account my checking account mm -hmm. and the money was there every month so i proved god that god can provide me he can take care of me and i can trust him to give me the money that i need without worry so that's why i'm now i'm partnering with god and letting god use me to mm -hmm. uh, help advance people and awaken their intuition to get them in touch with their divine self because when you're touch with their divine self you just uh you know and when I get answers, I'm just obligated to go and do what God tell me to do. Like the other day, I got a message. Uh, I saw someone's phone number and the lady was in hospice. So uh, God just spoke to me and I called them and said, you know, I just want to tell your wife. I left the message because they didn't answer the phone. Just want to tell your wife that she's done a wonderful job in this lifetime. She's uh, just done a magnificent work and God is very pleased with the work she's done. And then the next day I got a message that she had made her transition. So I gave her permission to move from this plane to the next plane. Because when we, um, some people will suffer and think they need to suffer, but God doesn't always have that plan for everyone. We're all here to work on our soul salvation. I mean, for past karmic uh, debt uh, to grow spiritually. And so some of us are here to grow spiritually, but that doesn't mean we have to suffer. And then some people come back to pay that karmic debt. So they may come back handicapped with one hand, one arm, or one leg. They may come back for one day or one hour. Or so all of these things are what they have chosen to do to pay that karmic debt. So we don't know what people are here to do or how they're supposed to do what they do. But I just kind of got them through the process so that they can live a, fruit, a fruitful, productive life. So everyone's here to grow and to learn. It's not my business to tell people how to do it, but I'm here to support them and guide them on the path that they need to go so they can heal themselves. And when they choose to leave this, life, this time from the planet, they will know that they've done the best that they can do and they'll be on the path to their higher expression. Wow, Dr. Ida, you've given a lot of information there. So let us recap quickly. You have a system. You are able to help people because of your experience. And it is very much trust. You believe in trust. You're also not afraid to invest in yourself. And that is just so awesome. Our time is nearly up. If there was one thing you would like to message you would like to leave our audience with. What would that be? I would say, in everything we do, use love. Be uh, certainly praising every day your body, your every part of your body, the everything that's in your presence, 
and be grateful for even for the breath that we breathe, but having eyes, nose, ears to hear, and know that there's more to come. And I also would like to let people know if they want to talk with me about anything I do, they can go to www.calendly.com or slash Dr. Ida Green and they get and, and put down 30, 30 M, 30 minutes at just 30 M I N. And that way they can have a session with me and we can talk about how I can support them. And I have a basic program, uh, this kind of five week program to introduce them to the intuition or to awaken and activate their intuition. And it's very inexpensive. And I would be delighted to help them. And they, they want to reach me. You know, you you reach me through Messenger, but uh, I have my email is idagreed at cox.net. My website is www.askdrida.com. And um, they can reach me through all those methods. If you're in the United States, you can call me at 619-262-9951. Yes. Also, we're going to pop all that in the show notes, Ida. And also you can find Dr. Ida on Facebook and request, friend request her as well. Thank you so, so much for being with us today. I really appreciate it. And you have given so much value. May you be blessed in return. People, we'll be back next week. You'll find Dr. Ida's information in the show notes. Otherwise, you can press pause, write it down and be in touch. Looking forward to chatting with you again next week. And Dr. Ida, thank you for being here with us today. Bye-bye. Bye.